Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Mr. Oxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. Um, not too much going on in the uh, in the news in terms of energy, and that's one of the reasons why I've been a little quiet, perhaps, in terms of uh, making another video. Um, I did work on another presentation. I'm not sure if I um, will actually uh, uh, create that one as a video and uh, and make it public because uh, it's probably going to offend a whole lot of people. <laughs> But uh, anyway, what I wanted to do today is, is spend a little bit of time just to um, give you a quick news update about some of the things that have been happening on uh, happening out there that uh, you may be interested in. So um, let me uh, just go here for a second and uh, share my screen so that I can uh, kind of show you what was going on here. Uh, firstly, on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, Alexi, and I'm going to try this one, Volsky, from uh, Russia is from Moscow, is one of our uh, subscribers. He said, Rudy, I hope you're doing well. I would like to share a link with you. It's a Luke Oil conference call. The uh, transcript is from uh, Vajit Elektorov's view on the oil industry. He's a major shareholder and CEO of Luke Oil. Uh, that's actually what I'm going to discuss today. But um, just while I'm on this page here, this caught my eye, Pulverizer A. Uh, his commentary is, as much as my uh, oil stocks would love that, I don't see that doing much good for the rest of my holdings with a smiley face. Uh, that was in response to um, a post that I uh, posted on the uh, YouTube channel saying, well, could go to $100 a barrel. Uh, in fact, um, in my most optimistic view, uh, oil might go to uh, even more than $100 a barrel, uh, but we'll see about that. Um, anyway, that's a this discussion for a different times, not for today. But let's look at the um, actual report here uh, not that one, this one. Um, so obviously I translated it into uh, English because my Russian is not very good. So uh, Alexei, uh, forgive me for uh, not doing this in Russian, uh, but I'm just going to kind of uh, go through this report with you quickly. I have read it. Um, it's very, very interesting. So Alek Perov is the CEO of Luke Oil, and he warned of a risk of oil shortages due to emissions control. Uh, demand for it, according to Luke Oil, will depend on global warming. The head of Luke Oil risk, uh, warned of the risk of a shortage of oil in the world due to a lack of investment in the industry amid the flight against carbon. Uh, carbon, man, that gets a bad rap. You know, if it, if, if it weren't for car carbon, we wouldn't even uh, firstly be alive. And secondly, you for sure wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, the company has developed four different scenarios of how climate change will affect global oil demand. So Luke Oil, the largest private oil company in Russia, sees the risk of a shortage of oil and gas supply on the world oil market in the next five years due to a lack of investment in the extractive industry, the extractive industry being the drillers, right? The co-owner and president of the company, Alexei Perov, announced this at a conference call on March the 10th. So this is hot off the press today. It is Thursday. It is March the 11th. So this was yesterday, Moscow time. For a long time now, this is a quote, our industry has been experiencing a shortage of investments, restricted access to capital due to strong financial sector support for energy transformation leads to a reduction in the investment potential of the industry, Alexei Perov said. Banks and investors support the transition to alternative energy sources and in some cases refuse to invest in companies with a carbon footprint. I'll just pause there for a second and say, of course, banks and investors support this transition to alternative energy while they drive their combustion engine motor cars, plug their cell phones in to recharge it, uh, turn on the lights at the office as if electricity just comes from the wall and it has nothing to do with um, coal or anything like that at all. But that's, again, a discussion for another, uh, perhaps a topic for another discussion. According to the head of Luke Oil, the lack of funds has become especially obvious against the backdrop of the consequences of the coronavirus pandemic or plandemic, if you so prefer. He further warned that underinvestment in the industry could lead to price volatility and negatively affect the growth rate of the global economy. Well, if you're an environmentalist, you don't really care too much about the economy, I guess, uh, because all you care about is a green earth. Therefore, if after that you have no food to eat because there's no CO2 being pumped into the greenhouses that grow your food, you wouldn't really care because in your backyard you probably grow some lettuce. What scenario for changes in oil demand is Luke Oil considering? Luke Oil has completed work 
on scenarios for changing global oil demand as part of its developing climate strategy. Alek Perov presented four of them, evolution, equilibrium, transformation, and two degrees Celsius. The evolution scenario assumes that countries fulfill their climate commitments as well as a return to the United, uh, of the United States to the Paris Climate Agreement. One of the biggest pieces of fraud ever because it actually uh, says a whole lot of nothing. For the people who have actually read it, uh, you will know that there's nothing in it at all. Uh, it just implies reducing carbon emissions and modernizing industry. Of course, we know that Donald Trump pulled out of the uh, Paris Agreement and Joe Biden decided to return to the agreement just last month. Well, you know what my grandmother used to say, you just can't fix stupid. Uh, it took me a couple of years to figure out she was actually talking about me. But in this particular instance, I am specifically referring to uh, Mr. Trump's successor, Mr. Biden. Under the scenario, the peak in oil demand is about 105 million barrels per day. Falls on 2035, the air temperature from 2020 to 2050 will increase by 2.6 degrees Celsius, according to the presentation of Luke Oil. This scenario looks the most realistic today, but does not allow for the achieving of the goals of the Paris Agreement. Well, the goals of the Paris Agreement to begin with are not really achievable at all, because many of them are just purely aspirational. Once again, that's for the people who have actually looked at the Paris Agreement. There's a guy on uh, YouTube who used to be a TV host. His name is John Stossel. He has an interesting five minute video on uh, the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. You can uh, maybe search in YouTube to find Stossel Paris Climate Agreement and you'll find that video quite easily. Otherwise, if I find it, I'll put a link in the, in the description below. At the end of 2020, demand for oil amounted to about 90 million barrels per day. We know that peak demand currently is about 100 million barrels per day. The equilibrium scenario is based on the premise of accelerated growth in renewable energy sources and the so-called negative greenhouse gas emissions. We consider this scenario to be most likely in the spectrum of scenarios of a rise of global temperature from 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, since it provides a balance between achieving climate goals and energy availability. Good job all of us. The equilibrium scenario is probably very likely as more money goes into renewables and extractors keep getting punished. It will require active development of climate regulation around the world. According to the presentation under the scenario, the demand for oil will peak at 100 million barrels per day. That will be reached in 2030. Um, that's kind of where we are right now. We're sort of uh, hovering between 90 and 100 million barrels per day. Between evolution and equilibrium, there is a two degrees Celsius scenario. That assumes a peak in demand of about 100 million barrels in 2030 and its reduction to 90 million barrels in 2025. The evolution scenario assumes that by that time, demand will remain at 100 million barrels. Equilibrium, about 80 million barrels it's for the future. Transformation is a much more radical scenario which corresponds by, to an increase in the average annual air temperature over 30 years by about 1.5 degrees Celsius and provides for more significant changes in the world energy and industry, as well as accelerated growth in energy efficiency. If this comes to fruition, the peak demand for oil will be about 100 million barrels. Now you can probably tell by now, if you kind of look at these four different scenarios, uh, regardless of which scenario you prefer or you think is most likely, we keep hovering at around 100 million barrels. Uh, which is basically the um, demand that you would expect um, probably for the next couple of lifetimes. But um, anyway, we're only looking ahead here to 2030, uh, sorry, 2050, which is only 30 years away. If this comes to fruition, peak demand for oil will also be about 100 million barrels, which will have already happened in 2025. And by 2050, it will drop by half to about 50 million tons per day. The share of electric vehicles in the sale of new passenger cars in the case of transformation and equilibrium will grow from 2% in 2019 to 92% in 2050. So this assumes that almost all combustion engine motor cars will disappear. So I better get a couple to add to my collection so that I can keep some that were made in the 50s, 60s and 70s uh, so that one day I can put them in a museum for my grandchildren to be able to enjoy really funky muscle cars from uh, when I was just a little child. 
All scenarios assume a significant increase in the share of renewable energy sources, recycled plastic, accelerated electrification of transport. Alex Perov notice over the past five years, an average of 150 gigawatts of generating capacities from renewable energy sources have been commissioned by the world. By 2050, this figure should grow at least twice in the scenario of two degrees Celsius and fourfold in the implementation of transport or uh, transformation. He added, the key conditioning for reducing greenhouse gas emissions in, is the large scale development of negative emissions through natural and technological solutions for capturing and storing carbon. And the relevant technologies are now at an early stage for the development. Luke Oil intends to create a special venture fund. Of course, we know that Occidental uh, Low Carbon Ventures is a leader in this regard because they have already invested a billion dollars in Oxy Low Carbon Ventures in order to capture and uh, use CO2 in order to improve their yield. And by the way, uh, whatever they don't use to improve their yield as a driller, they can always sell to uh, people who grow our food because greenhouse, greenhouses are pumped full of CO2 in order to improve their yield. Because remember, CO2 is plant food. Russia ratified the Paris Climate Agreement in September 2019. The European Union has decided to make its economy climate neutral by 2050. This means that carbon emissions into the atmosphere must be reduced to zero or offset. For this, the European Union plans to introduce a carbon tax. A draft law on it is still under development. On it is still under development. The methodology for calculating the tax is still unknown. So this is kind of like almost the uh, the glue that holds all of this together. This is a massive money making scam because basically what they're doing is they're saying in order to reach our climate neutral uh, targets for 2050, we will introduce a carbon tax. Um, if that makes sense to you, you can help me out by please explaining it to me in the comments because basically all they're doing is grabbing money. If the plan is implemented, Russian exporting companies will have to pay a cross-border European Union tax in order to equate producers from Europe with competitors from countries outside of its borders where there are no such conditions for emissions. Auditors uh, from KPMG under this base, base case said the tax will be introduced in 2025 and will apply only to direct emissions of greenhouse gases. These guys don't have a clue, not KPMG, they're pretty smart. Um, the European Union legislators just do not have a clue. By the way, Russia, uh, if the European Union levies a tax on your oil exports, then sell it somewhere else. China and India is right next door and those countries are starved for energy. So guys, on that uh, note, I'm going to stop this video because otherwise I'm probably just going to get annoyed and I'm supposed to be happy Mr. Oxy uh, as uh, Occidental trades sort of in a uh, $30 range or thereabouts. Um, you know, I might even plug a trading stop on Occidental and say sell it, if it when it reaches uh, $100 a share. But what the heck for now, this is happy Mr. Oxy saying uh thanks for watching uh remember to remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already and i look forward to uh, your interactions in the comments have a great day take care bye bye